Hi, I'm Ben Sujono from linesandstrokes.com. I'm going to show you how I created this acrylic painting titled If Baby Yoda Was Japanese. I was binge watching The Mandalorian until midnight. On sleeping, I had a dream that Baby Yoda was my one year old Japanese chin. His ride was a 19th century Japanese basket with a copper trim, with a cover like an old baby bassinet. Time to sketch out my dream on paper. Bear in mind that my elements are ancient, while the Mandalorian version is futuristic. What's important here is getting the position within the canvas right. Also, the proportions of the elements relative to each other must make sense. The dog is the main subject, so he can't be too small relative to the basket. The actual Baby Yoda is a little small relative to his egg for me, so I take some artistic license. But I don't want to stray too much from the original. Of course, he has much bigger ears than my dog. The baby bassinet cover is dictated by the basket in the sense it must look like it will flip down and close. Baby Yoda's cover is more like a helmet with hinges on the sides. Since mine is ancient, I'll just ignore it. No modern day hinges for me. Time to transfer the sketch to canvas. First, I lay tracing paper over the sketch. Then I trace the sketch. I use an ink pen instead of a pencil because the contrast is sharper and there is no carbon dust. With the sharp contrast, I can easily see where to trace the lines when I flip the tracing paper. On the flip side, I trace with a soft, dark, 4B pencil. I will leave a pencil trail on the canvas later. Time to trace on the canvas. First I lay the tracing paper I used before over the canvas. Then I retrace the lines on the tracing paper. This time I use a ballpoint pen so I can press the carbon into the canvas. The carbon impression is usually a little faint on the canvas. Here I retrace the fine lines on the canvas with a thicker black pen to highlight the boundaries of the elements. I don't want to lose them in the paint. Note that the canvas is larger than the sketchbook. This time I trace the outline of the background landscape. Continuing the Japanese theme, I put a snow-capped mountain and a pagoda. It's time to put a frisket film to mask the main subject, which is the dog and basket. I lay the frisket film on top of the canvas on the floor. Then I trace the outline of the basket and cover with a bright pink marker. Using a craft knife and a cutting board, I cut the frisket film. I pull the frisket cut out, then peel off a layer to expose the sticky side. I stick the cut out on the canvas, aligning the frisket to the boundaries. Using a big brush, I paint my first layer of light blue for the sky. Normally, I would use an airbrush so I won't leave brush marks and so the sky would be very even. Airbrushing is more work, so I decided to try traditional methods. It does mean I have to apply many thin layers to get an even sky. Thin means watered down.
For my second layer, I switch to a broad foam brush. The foam brush seems to carry more paint and doesn't drip. For the landscape itself, I use a traditional flat wide brush. Like the sky, I'll put on several layers. Unlike the sky, the layers have to be thick. After adding a reddish layer over the dark blue, I start shaping the mountain and the pagoda. I add more detail to the ridges of the mountain and the size of the pagoda. Also, some more detail to the landscape around them. I peel off the Fritzkit film and rub off any residual glue from the canvas. Also, I try to clean off any paint that seeped through the Fritzkit film. Using gray paint, I retrace the weaving patterns for the basket and cover. Note, this challenging task is a consequence of choosing a basket. The actual Baby Yoda's egg has smooth surfaces. Using a mid-tone brown, I start filling in the sections of the basket. This is fairly labor-intensive, like making this video. I paint a darker brown on the top and bottom of each section of the basket. I use a very dark brown for the section boundaries. In the middle of each section, I use a yellowish brown. Then I add a touch of white to highlight each section. Time to paint the copper trim. I start with an orange brown layer. I add a reddish brown for the darker parts of the copper. Then a light yellow for the highlights. Time to paint the inside of the cover. I start with very dark brown stripes. The weave on the cover is much finer than the basket itself. I add a medium brown wash for the inside of the cover. And I start a light brown layer for the front of the cover. I add very dark brown lines on the front of the cover to show fine weaving. For the dough's white area, I start with a light gray as a base layer. For the dog's strawberry blonde area, I start with a light ochre as a base layer. For the dog's nose and mouth area, I start with a pink and light gray as a base layer. For the dog's eyes, I start with the dark brown as a base layer. Then I add more detail to the nose and mouth and hair.
I add more detail to the dog's face, concentrating on the eyes and mouth. This is what determines the likeness. For the jacket, I lay a base layer of pink. I work on the hair too. On the cover, I add more detail to show the weave. Also, I fix the boundary between the dog and cover. On the cover, I darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. Also, I add more detail to the face. Using a very fine brush, on the cover's front, I darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. Again with a fine brush, I fix the boundaries within the basket. Once again with a fine brush, I fix the boundaries between the basket and the background. I add more detail to the jacket, including shadows and highlights. You can't see me signing the artwork because my big head blocked the camera, so I had to cut that from the video. See the finished work on linesandstrokes.com or Fine Arts America. Please stay tuned by liking my page. Thanks for watching.